Hi bookish besties, my name is Brittany. This is Rescues and Reads. Thank you so much for joining me here today. If you are new, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. And if you're already subscribed, as always, I appreciate your continued support. Thank you for returning to another video. Today it is time to do my October book of the month pick or pass. <music> So before we get into the meat of the video, I wanted to get your feedback because obviously this video is going up well after the October books were released on Book of the Month. And the reason for that is I am only able to film on the weekends. And since the first of the month fell very early in the week, it fell on a Tuesday and I believe these were released on Monday the 30th. That means that the earliest opportunity I had to film this video was today, which is October 6th. And so already by that point, it has been several days since these books were released and it's going to be even longer until this video is posted. I believe this is is not scheduled to go live until October 9th. And this is just going to happen anytime the first of the month falls super early on in a week. I'm not going to be able to get this video out in a timely manner when that happens. And if y'all would prefer that I just don't post these videos when that happens, that is absolutely fine with me. I just wanted to get your feedback. I didn't want to skip this video just because it was going to go up late without getting your thoughts and opinions on the matter because I know that a lot of people actually really enjoy this video. I just feel badly that it has to go out so late. I don't know if you will find value in this video at this point in time. Going forward, if I'm not able to film, edit, and upload these videos within a few days of the book of the month releases, then I might just skip them all together based on what your thoughts and feelings are. So please be sure to leave that in a comment down below. Now, truth be told, y'all, book of the month really surprised me with the selections that they put out this month. I was very much off the mark with regard to most of my predictions. A lot of the books that they featured were complete surprises to me. Some of them I had never heard of. They weren't on my radar, and we're going to talk about them today. So as per usual, we are going to talk about the curated monthly selections selections and then we will go on into the add-on selections. And the very first selection that they had for October was The Book of Witching by C.J. Cook. Now this is actually one that I did feature in my book of the month prediction video and it is one that I was so incredibly excited to see featured because I just loved the vibes and the synopsis of this story and so I instantly added this to my box. I was really glad to have been right about this prediction because I didn't think that I was going to be. And this just quick take on book of the month says a mysterious hiking accident kicks off the spooky tale of witchcraft revenge and a mother's search for answers and it is classified as gothic fiction and I have never read anything from CJ Cook but I've heard a lot of really great things about their books and so if I love this one I am definitely going to be diving more into CJ Cook's backlist because there's just something really working for me about the synopsis and I hope it lives up to my expectations. Next we actually have a young adult fantasy called The Wild Huntress and this is by Emily Lloyd-Jones. The synopsis of this one says every five years two kingdoms take part in a wild hunt. Joining is a bloody risk and even the most qualified hunters can suffer the deadliest fates. Still, hundreds gamble their lives to participate, all vying for the hunt's life-changing prize, a magical wish granted by the other king. Branwyn possesses a gift no other human has, the ability to see and slay monsters. She's desperate to cure her mother's sickness, and the wild hunt is her only option. Gwydion is the least impressive of his magically talented family, but with his ability to control plants and his sleight of hand, he'll do whatever it takes to keep his cruel older brother from becoming a tyrant. Pridery is prince-born and monster-raised. Deep down, the royal crown doesn't interest him. All he wants is to know where he belongs. If they band together against the monstrous creatures within the woods, they have a chance to win. But then again, nothing is guaranteed when all is fair in love. That actually sounds really intriguing. I'm looking forward to seeing other people's reviews about the story because I've never actually read anything from her, but I do feel that people who read her really, really enjoy her work. Next, we have a horror called Dearest by Jackie Walters. And this is one that I don't think that I had seen around at all, so it was certainly not on my radar. It says, Flora is a new mom enamored of her baby girl Iris, even if she arrived a few weeks early. With her husband still deployed, Flora navigates the newborn stage alone, but as the sleepless nights pass and the loneliness of their half-empty home, the edges of her reality begin to blur. Just as Flora becomes convinced she is losing her mind, a surprising guest shows up, Flora's own mother, to whom she hasn't spoken in years. Can they mend their fraught relationship? Or is there more Flora's mother isn't telling her about the events that led to their estrangement? As stranger and scarier events unfold, Flora begins to suspect the house is not as empty as she once thought. She must determine is her hold on reality slipping dangerously away, or is she, in fact, the only thing standing between a terrifying visitor and her baby? So it sounds like this is going to have somewhat of an unreliable narrator trope because she herself doesn't know if she's losing their mind or if there is actually something more sinister going on in her house. And I'm really interested to know what the backstory is between her and her mother. Like why are they estranged and why when her mother shows up are all of these things kind of escalating. So this is not one that I added to my box. I'm not the biggest horror reader but I am intrigued by the synopsis of this one. All right and then next the book that was perhaps the most surprising to see featured on Book of the Month was the newest release from Frieda McFadden called The Boyfriend. Now 
I could be completely off the mark about this, but from what I'm understanding is that because Frieda McFadden is gaining in popularity, her books are being traditionally published at this point. And because of that, now she might be more on Book of the Month's radar. I am still a little bit surprised because of her popularity. And I know there were a lot of people really upset to see this book featured. Now, I have talked about this before, but it really does not bother me when Book of the Month features already popular authors. It also doesn't bother me when Book of the Month features the same authors over and over and over again, authors that have gotten really popular like Riley Sager, because this is their bread and butter, right? These are like surefire hits for them and it's going to be what keeps them in business. But a lot of people are interested in Book of the Month for the new authors, for the debut authors, for authors they might never have heard of, for new discoveries. And so seeing Frieda McFadden was not necessarily a welcome surprise to a lot of people, but it was definitely a welcome surprise to me. Of course, all of her books have only been published in paperback and now I have a lovely Book of the Month edition to add to my shelves. This is one that I would have gotten myself anyway. So of course I quickly added it to my box as I am a pretty big Frieda McFadden fan. This says, Sydney Shaw, like every single woman in New York, has terrible luck with dating. She's seen it all. Men who lie in their dating profile, men who stick her with the dinner bill, and worst of all, men who can't shut up about their mothers. Finally, she hits the jackpot. Her new boyfriend is utterly perfect. He's charming, handsome, and works as a doctor at a local hospital. Sydney is swept off her feet. Then the brutal murder of a young woman, the latest in a string of deaths across the coast, confounds police. The primary suspect? A mystery man who dates his victims before he kills them. Sydney should feel safe. After all, she is dating the guy of her dreams. But she can't shake her own suspicions that the perfect man may not not be as perfect as he seems because someone is watching her every move and if she doesn't get to the truth she'll be the killer's next victim. I just have a feeling that this and traditional Frieda McFadden style is going to be very fast-paced, very compulsively readable, such a wild and crazy ride. No matter what you feel about Frieda McFadden, she writes very popcorn bingeable thrillers and they are excellent palate cleansers if you are looking for something like that. I always have an amazing time when I'm reading a Frieda McFadden and I always love the twists that she includes at the end of her books. I think that they're really creative and clever and for the most part I really don't ever see them coming. So I really applaud what Frieda McFadden is able to do. I know that she doesn't work for some people and I feel sorry for those people because I have a great time with Frieda McFadden and again this is the only other book that I added to my box for the month of October. And then the final monthly curated selection is actually one that I did get right. It was a paranormal romance called The Dagger and the Flame by Catherine Doyle. Since I did go more in depth about the story in the book of the month prediction video I'm not going to say too much about it here. The quick take just says in this seductive tale of rival assassins and thieves a desire for revenge might just ignite a dangerous romance. So Book of the Month seems to be dipping its toes more heavily into paranormal slash fantasy romance and I think it's a trend that we are going to continue to see. They featured one last month, they featured one this month, and given their rising popularity of these genres I think that we're going to continuously see these featured on Book of the Month. It's not one that I really had any interest in, it's not one that I added to my box, but I'm not surprised to see it there at all and I have a feeling that a lot of people were really interested in it. All right now getting into the add-ons, this is where I feel like I completely lost the plot because I don't think I got one of these correct. Now in my Book of the Month prediction video, I did mention that Richard Osman's newest release, We Solve Murders, was already there as an add-on. And I believe at that time, and I missed it, Intermezzo by Sally Rooney had also been added as an add-on. This was a prediction that I believe that I had for September's Book of the Month. So it wasn't featured in September, but it is now featured for October. This is obviously one that I'm not surprised to see featured here because I did have it as an original prediction. So if you are a Sally Rooney fan, this one is there and available. But yeah, all of the other add-ons I really did not have on my radar at all. So these were a complete surprise to me. First we have a historical fantasy called The Stone Witch of Florence by Anna Roche and this says 1348 as the Black Plague ravages Italy Ginevra di Gasparo is summoned to Florence after nearly a decade of lonely exile. Ginevra has a gift harnessing the hidden powers of gemstones. She can heal the sick but when word spread of her unusual abilities she was condemned as a witch and banished. Now the same men who expelled Ginevra are begging for her return. Ginevra obliges assuming the city's leaders are finally ready to accept her unorthodox cures amid a pandemic but upon arrival she is tasked with a much different task. She must use her collection of jewels to track down a ruthless thief who is ransacking Florence's churches for priceless relics, the city's only hope for protection. If she succeeds, she'll be a recognized physician and never accused of witchcraft again. But as her investigation progresses, Ginevra discovers she's merely a pawn in a much larger scheme than the one she's been hired to solve. And the dangerous men behind this conspiracy won't think twice about killing a stone witch to get what they want. So again, this one was not on my radar at all. It was apparently published in October, but it is a historical fantasy that is definitely not my vibe. It's not really something that typically works for me. So it is not one that I added to my box. Book of the Month also had the newest Sophie Kinsella called What Does It Feel Like? And I believe that they have featured Sophie Kinsella before on Book of the Month. So she could be just one of the regular returning authors that they feature. I personally have never read a Sophie Kinsella. I've never really been interested in Sophie Kinsella, but I know that she has a pretty huge fan base. This says Eve is a successful novelist who wakes up one day in a hospital bed with no memory of how she got there. Her husband, never far from her side, explains that she has had an operation to remove the large 
malignant tumor growing in her brain. As Eve learns to walk, talk, and write again, and as she wrestles with her diagnosis and how and when to explain it to her beloved children, she begins to recall what's most important to her. Recounted in brief anecdotes, each one is an attempt to answer the type of impossible questions recognizable to anyone navigating the labyrinth of grief. This short, extraordinary novel is a celebration of life shot through with warmth and humor. It will both break your heart and put it back together again. So this one is actually a novella, which is really interesting to me. I don't think that Book of the Month typically makes it a habit to feature novellas, so I'm not entirely sure what inspired them to go ahead and feature it this time. But like I said, I know Sophie Kinsella has a pretty large fan base. So this one, if you enjoy Sophie Kinsella, you might be interested in picking up as well. Another one that I was pretty surprised to see was the newest release from Jason Rekulak called The Last One at the Wedding. Now I know that Jason Rekulak has a really popular release out right now that was not featured on Book of the Month, but I'm pretty sure that he's been featured previously with one of his older releases. So it seems like they might have skipped one of his releases in favor of this one. So that's why I was kind of surprised to see it. But I know, again, a lot of people were highly anticipating this book. It says, Frank Zatowski is shocked when his daughter Maggie calls him for the first time in three years. He was convinced that their estrangement would become permanent. He's even more surprised when she invites him to her upcoming wedding in New Hampshire. Frank is ecstatic and determined to finally make things right. He arrives to find that the wedding is at a private estate, very secluded, very luxurious, very much out of his league. It seems that Maggie failed to mention that she's marrying Aiden Gardner, the son of a famous tech billionaire. Feeling desperately out of place, Frank focuses on reconnecting with Maggie and getting to know her new family, but it's difficult. Aiden is withdrawn and evasive. Maggie doesn't seem to have time for him and he finds that the locals are disturbingly hostile to the gardeners. Frank needs to know more about this family his daughter is marrying into, but if he pushes too hard, he could lose Maggie forever. A father and daughter have an estrangement. She surprisingly invites him to her wedding and he's finding some really weird things about the family that she's marrying into. So this definitely has promise. I've never read anything from a Jason Recolac before, but I will likely be trying this one because it fits a project that I'm working on. I didn't add this one to my box, but I think I might listen to it first before trying to get my hands on this copy. So if y'all have read it, you'll have to let me know down below what your thoughts are about it. Another one that I had not yet heard of prior to seeing it featured on Book of the Month is a book called The Book of George by Kate Greathead. This is a literary fiction and it says, if you haven't had the misfortune of dating a George, you know someone who has. He's a young man brimming with potential, but incapable of following through, non-committal to his long-suffering girlfriend, Jenny, distant from, but still reliant on his mother, funny one minute, sullenly brooding the next. Here, Kate Greathead paints one particular unforgettable George in a series of droll and surprisingly poignant snapshots of his life over two decades. And yet it's hard not to root for George, at least a little. Beneath his cynicism is a reservoir of fondness for Jenny's valiant willingness to put up with him. Each demonstration of his flaws is paired with a self-eviscerating comment. No one is more disappointed in him than himself, except maybe Jenny and his mother. As hilarious as it is astute and singular, as it is universal, the book of George is a deft, unexpectedly moving portrait of millennial masculinity. I don't even really know what that means. It's definitely not something that piqued my interest, even though y'all know that I love a good character-driven story. This book, just based on the synopsis, didn't ultimately feel like it had much of a point to me. So it's not one that I added to my box, but this is also another one that I am really interested to hear other people's opinions about. All right, and then the very last add-on that I want to talk about is another gothic fiction. So Book of the Month featured two gothic fictions this month. This isn't one that I added to my box, but it does seem really intriguing. It is called The Bog Wife by Kay Cronister. Since time immemorial, the Hattersley family has tended the cranberry bog. In exchange, the bog sustains them. The staunch seasons of their lives are governed by a strict covenant that is renewed each generation with the ritual sacrifice of their patriarch, and in return, the bog produces a bog wife. Brought to life from vegetation, this woman is meant to carry on the family line. But when the bog fails or refuses to honor the bargain, the Hattersleys, a group of discordant siblings, still grieving the mother who mysteriously disappeared years earlier, face an unknown future. Middle child Wenna, summoned back to the dilapidated family manor just as her marriage is collapsing, believes the Hattersleys must abandon their patrimony. Her siblings are not so easily persuaded. Eldest daughter, Ida, de facto head of the household, seeks to salvage the compact by desecrating it. Younger son, Percy, retreats into the wilderness in a dangerous bid to summon his own bog wife. And his youngest daughter, Nora, takes desperate measures to keep her warring siblings together. Fledgling patriarch, Charlie, uncovers a disturbing secret that casts doubt over everything the family has ever believed about itself. Brimming with aching loss and the universal struggle between honoring family commitments and the drive to strike out on one's own, the bog wife is a haunting invocation of the arcane power of the habits and the habits that bound us. So that actually seems very, very atmospheric. In some ways, I'm getting kind of wayward vibes by Amelia Hart, but I wasn't necessarily as intrigued by the synopsis of this. So ultimately, I only ended up picking up The Boyfriend by Frieda McFadden and The Book of Witching by CJ Cook. So it was a very light month. All right, everybody, that is it. So that is my October picker pass. As always, if you are a Book of the Month subscriber, please comment down below and let me know what you ended up selecting or whether or not you decided to skip altogether. Or if you are not a Book of the Month subscriber, please comment down below and let me know if any of these have piqued your interest and you might 
might want to go ahead and pick them up in the future. Or if you made it to the end of this video and you were not feeling chatty, go ahead and leave me some type of tie emoji if there is one in honor of the boyfriend by Frida McFadden. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I typically post two videos a week, one on Wednesdays, one on Sundays, and I would love to connect with you in any of those future videos or on any of my other social media platforms, which you can always find linked down below along with any books featured in the video. Until next time, y'all. Bye. Thank you.